Um, I, I spent most of my life as a chef. Um, and I, about five, six years ago, decided that I needed to go back to school to understand more about what food did in our bodies. Like I was, I've always been really curious about how food interacts with our, with our bodies and what it does. And um, so when I went back to school, I was able to figure out exactly how what we put in really interacts and um, makes an, a different outcome on what how we feel, what develops disease-wise, and how we can protect ourselves health-wise. Over the last, I've been working with patients and I, I lost my dad to cancer about three years ago. And so cancer kind of came into my life and I decided that I wanted to start understanding a little bit more about it and working with people who were um, living with cancer. And so what I want to say to you all is this. Um, I don't pretend to be an expert on cancer. Um, it's, it's bigger than my, than my scope of practice. What I do understand really, really well is food and the gut. So I specialize in gut health. And I think it was about 2,400 years ago that Hipp Hippocrates said, all disease begins in the gut. And he was right. So we're starting to understand now that everything is connected to our digestive system. And so when we think about disease, any disease, we have to kind of start there because it's kind of like, if you think about um, like a gate, to the rest of our body. Our digestive system is that sort of gate and the key to making sure that the rest of our body stays healthy. And so when I work with people, I always start with gut health. Um, I know that when we're going through cancer treatment, one of the first things our doctors do is hand us a prescription for um, Prilosec or whatever to mitigate the, um, the stomach problems that come with treatment. And um, so when, when we're in recovery and we're starting to look at um, uh, repairing gut, um, then we have to look at things that really start to solidify our gut health and close those intestinal barriers. Cancer comes to us, I think, because, well, we have to ask that question. Like, why did you come to me? Why did you come to me now, right? So what changes in my life do I need to make cancer unnecessary? So, um, here are some commonalities that I have found along cancer patients. Cancer thrives in a hypoxic environment, which means a lack of oxygen. Cancer develops when the immune system is compromised or distracted. Cancer develops when there's extreme stress. Um, and there's cancer that develops when we're exposed to carcinogens over a long period of time. And cancer is a cellular disease. It develops when the mitochondria are, are disrupted or damaged and don't go through our normal cell death, which is apoptosis. And they divide and develop, um, develop a tumor instead, they multiply. So when we're talking about the immune system, it's really important to connect the immune system and the gut together because about 75% of our immune system lives right there in our gut. So <clears throat> let me explain the gut to you a little bit. There is our, there's a number of organs that are involved in our gut health. We have our stomach, we have our pancreas, we have our liver and gallbladder, we have our small intestines and our large intestines. And if any of those aren't functioning in properly, then we risk the, um, the development of something called leaky gut, dysbiosis, leaky gut, which is an imbalance in our, 
in our gut flora and can, um, and can to start to develop uh, permeability in our gut lining. So it means that proteins can pass through our intestine, intestinal wall. And then we start to develop things like autoimmune disease, which can lead to more compromised immunity, right? Um, gut disease or gut permeability and dysbiosis are also linked to diabetes. Um, diabetes ha happens to be one of those diseases, which is can be a precursor to cancer. So uh, can diabetic patients are three times more likely to develop cancer. Um, so nutritional, um, nutritional therapy and repairing the gut lining is gonna be key for you all when you come through your um, treatment to getting back on the right track. So nutritional deficiencies are also linked to cancer. And when we aren't digesting things properly, then we can't uptake and utilize the nutrition from our food in a proper way. Um, so if you think about what you eat, like you could be eating the best diet in the world, but if you're not digesting it properly, you might as well cut out the middleman and throw the food in the toilet, right? So um, it's really important to think about your gut health as this sort of temple that you um, feed and, and nourish and make sure everything's working properly. And then you're putting in the right food to, um, to keep that system running the right way. Um, a compromised liver and the ability to, to detoxify are also components of a cancer diagnosis. Pancreatic enzyme deficiency is also linked to cancer, um, which is probably why diabetics are three times more likely to develop cancer. And the other thing that I want to address here is that we store trauma in our bodies. And so I think that's something that's often overlooked when we're repairing um, our bodies and we're looking at um, becoming healthier. We also have to look at the spirit, right? We have to look at repairing our spirit and our soul, right? So a lot of times we hold trauma in our bodies and we um, often manifest it as disease. So when I'm working with a client, I look really holistically at what's going on. We look at mind, body, spirit, right? Our gut is linked to everything else. It's our second brain. And we make serotonin in our guts. We make um, all, the, all the nutrition that we take in is converted into usable forms in our gut. And um, so it's just like, I can't stress this enough how important it is to keep our, our digestive system running properly. Um, an impaired gut flora leads to, I think I said this before, but leaky gut, which is, um, which leads to compromised immune response. So we have to look at things like antibiotic use, right? So long-term antibiotic use can really impair our gut flora. Prescription meds or antacids can really impair our gut flora. Processed foods can really impair our gut flora and stress and trauma can really impair our gut flora. So when we're, when we're looking at healing, we wanna make sure that we're doing a lot of um, deep breathing, stress management, minimal processed foods and keeping the prescription meds as little as possible. I know that's difficult in the time that you're in right now because there's a lot going on. Um, Nicole, I have a question. Yeah. Um, so for many of the women in the group, they're on chemo for mm -hmm. ever, basically. Um, okay. So I think that's kind of a special situation where, um, I mean, I know when I was on chemo, I, I took like, a ton of probiotics right in the, you know, like right in between, you know, to try to, so I think that's kind of specialized because, um, because the chemo impacts gut health so much. So I, I wonder if you can address that a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I would say, you know, one of the things that you can do really is, um, start to incorporate things that are really healing to the gut.
So bone broth is basically um, a, it's like, it's like soup stuff. The, the idea is that you're pulling nutrients out of the bones of animals and you're utilizing the amino acids and the minerals in those bones to help repair your gut lining. There's a ton of um, research out there that shows that L-glutamine and L-arginine, which are um, major factors in bone broth, can help to heal that intestinal um, lining. So you wanna start incorporating something like bone broth in your diet. And I often tell people to drink a cup of it in the morning, like as your first hot drink instead of coffee or tea, because it will set your gut up for success for the day. And you can make bone broth um, really easily on your own. I find that chicken is the easiest way to get into it because um, it is more palatable. If you haven't um, been using bone broth for a while, it's definitely more, uh, I think the flavor is a little more palatable. So I, every time I roast a chicken, I save the carcass and I throw it in my stock pot right away, cover it with about a gallon of water and then throw in about a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar and turn it on low for about 24 hours and then strain it out and you've got your bone broth. It's done. I, I'll add some salt to it to make it taste better. But, um, but that bone broth is so, so healing for your gut. Um, so if you can incorporate something like that into your diet every morning, it's going to improve your intestinal mucosa and improve your intestinal barrier. Probiotics are also really, really important. Um, a high quality probiotic or eating foods that are probiotic rich are gonna be really important. So including things like sauerkraut, um, kimchi, well, that's probably a little spicy for you guys, but um, uh, kombucha, um, yogurt, um, uh, non-sweetened yogurt, like plain Greek yogurt that has probiotics in it is gonna be really helpful as well. Um, there are a lot of supplements out there that can really help. I would recommend working with a nutritional therapist to help you figure out your supplements because as you're going through chemotherapy, you're going to want to have some things in your back pocket that are going to help heal your intestinal barrier so that you're not continually compromising it, right? Um, you have, and when you're taking in fiber, you have to make sure that you're taking in equal or more amount of water. Otherwise it's not going to work for you. Right. So it's going to clog things up if you're taking in too much fiber and then not taking in enough water. So, um, I highly recommend making sure that you're hydrating, um, you know, as, as you're going through your treatments, hydration is going to be key. And that's the other thing that I really like about bone broth is that it provides a hydration and it also provides tons of amino, amino acids and minerals at the same time. So you're getting this nourishing, hydrating drink. Um, the other thing that I wanna bring up is salt. Um, I know that when you're going through chemotherapy, your, your palate is, it changes, right? So you definitely have um, different taste buds and things don't taste right and all that stuff. So you wanna kind of play with your salt. Um, I always recommend people use something like pink Himalayan salt or Celtic sea salt in place of your regular table salt, like your Morton's table salt. The reason why is because table salt is stripped of all of its nutrients except for sodium. Whereas Himalayan pink salt or Celtic sea salt mm -hmm. contains uh, probably about 95 trace minerals in it and it doesn't uh, um, just raise your sodium so you're going to want to play around with your salt a little bit but using a high quality salt is extremely important as well it's going to help balance your electrolytes as people often tell me they don't feel hydrated even though they're drinking a ton of water if you add a little tiny pinch of your pink himalayan salt into your water it will help yourselves absorb the water. It will help you feel more hydrated and help the uptake of the water, okay? 
So it's a it's electrolyte balancing. So the other thing that you want to really pay attention to, like on the track of um, maintaining an alkaline environment is your in your body is your breathing. Oftentimes when we're stressed and we're feeling like fear and we're holding in the childhood trauma and all of that stuff, our breathing gets really shallow. So one of the things that I like to do is practice, make a small promise to myself every morning before I even get out of bed is I'm going to take five diaphragmatic breaths. So I'll hold my stomach and put my hands on my belly and I'll just breathe deeply into my belly for a count of five and then breathe out for a count of five. And that's going to help calm your nervous system and help your cells uptake oxygen, okay? So when we're talking about cells, um, this is the other thing about cancer is it's very much a cellular disease, right? So we're talking about mitochondria, ATP, all of the things that um, affect cells. And our cells are covered in a layer um, on the outside of fat, a layer of fat. And we want high quality fat in our diet in order for oxygen to be able to come in and out of those cells easily. And when we take in um, highly processed fats like canola, soy, um, corn, oil, things like that that are super highly processed, well, that, that layer around our cells gets compromised and it becomes brittle and it doesn't allow oxygen to pass in and out. So what we wanna do is start using high quality fats in order to repair that layer around the cells. So things like olive oil, flaxseed oil, um, and avocado oil are really beneficial in, in repairing that, those cell, that cellular layer around um, the, epi, the epithelial layer, okay? You don't wanna overdo it with coconut oil. But the cool thing about coconut oil is it doesn't require your, um, it doesn't require bile to break it down. So if you're having trouble with your liver or gallbladder, it's a really nice way to get some high quality fat in your diet without having to sacrifice, um, you know, without having to use bile to break it down. And then as much breathing, body awareness, mindfulness, and as, you know, I know it's hard to get exercise right now, but as much movement as you can incorporate is really, really important. So prebiotics are basically the food for, pro for your probiotics. So <clears throat> you want to get a combination of both. So um, probiotics, um, get a high quality probiotic and then feed it with a prebiotic. So you can do that supplementally, no problem. You can also do it with food, um, depending on where your appetite is at. Um, things like artichokes, Jerusalem artichokes, garlic and onions, all of those things are prebiotic foods. Um, but I know that getting those things into your system sometimes can be hard. Um, Constance, you should be drinking bone broth every day. Yeah. Like a cup, a cup a yeah. day or something? Yeah. Okay. Like get your mug, fill it so up maybe with Okay. Dip it every morning. Yep. So maybe more like a pint every day. Yeah, I suppose so. It's probably like, t yeah, 10 to 12. Well, yeah, I'd say yeah. 10 to 12 ounces would be good every okay. day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I do know that a functional doctor is able to take insurance and NTPs are not. But um, both of them will be able to give you the supplementation and the um the help you need as far as digestive repair. The, the other difference is an NTP can also um, help you a little bit more with food versus a uh, functional doctor sub, um, uh, specializes more in just getting the supplementation right. So when I work with people, I often, we work on repair of the digestion, getting that all set. And then we set the foundation for keeping our work um, like, not undoing all the good work we've just done, right? So we wanna get the digestion working properly and then we wanna make sure that the food we're putting in there is right. And for you guys, the things that you really wanna focus on are highly nutritious foods, like things that will, like every time you take a bite of something, try to get the most bang for your buck out of it. 
right? So the things that I find the most helpful for cancer patients are soups. And the reason for that is that you can throw in a whole bunch of a rainbow of vegetables. So um, you can throw them all into a soup pot with your bone broth, right? Which is healing and some nice herbs and things like that. And then you have the option of blending it up because oftentimes I know with you guys, it's hard to like the mouthfeel doesn't always work right. Like your things don't taste the same or you don't want to choose of blending things up a little bit. And that's what you, that's a good way to get nutrition into your body. If one was shying away from bone broth, what would be the next thing? So um, I would make a vegetable, uh, your own vegetable broth. So get, get a big pot um, or in your, in your crock pot, put in all your scraps, like your onions, your carrot tops, your celery scraps, whatever into your, um, into your crock pot with water and then get yourself some kombu. It's a, it's a, um, it's a seaweed mm -hmm. and it's going to provide you with the minerals that you need. Where, where would I get that? You can, I find the best place to, is to order it online. Um, go okay. to Amazon and just look up kombu and you can get like a big package of it and um, just put like a, put a half a piece or a piece in whenever you're making your vegetable broth. If you can afford organic food, buy organic food, right? Especially your meat and dairy. Okay, so that's- okay. I do have a question. A sure. lot of times for me, I always have this, because I get chemo once a week, on usually on Wednesdays. I always end up with this crazy metal taste. Like yeah. everything just tastes like metal, soup, yeah. everything. Yeah. So what, what's your suggestion or do you have a recommendation um, that can help tone that all the way down for me? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, you know, everybody's different. And um, so what I would suggest is playing around with adding a little bit of acid to whatever you're eating, maybe like a little squeeze of lemon or a little bit of vinegar or something like that to see if that helps. Um, you can try playing around with your salt ratio, but try and also try experimenting with a little bit of seaweed too. See if, see if, oh, um, see. yeah, try to try to help to like put in a little bit of uh, arame or, or, or kombu into some broth and see if that helps the, the minerality that might help a little bit. So sea vegetables are another thing that's really a great um, resource for you guys is including um, sea vegetables, mushrooms are a big one that you wanna get into your diet, okay? And um, a rainbow of fruits and vegetables, healing bone broth, and, um, and high quality uh, fats. And egg yolks are great for you guys. You wanna get that choline in your diet. It's really healing, yeah. Last week, they said I was on the low, the low level of, of my blood work was low for, you know, being compromised for being able to take the chemo. Nutritionally, might there be some suggestions to bring my blood levels back up? If you can, try to eat as many um, mushrooms as you can. Okay. So I, I would recommend taking a mushroom supplement, like my Taki mushroom um, supplement or lion's mane mushroom supplements are really um, going to help your immune system. Um, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, and there's some, like, honestly, for if I was your nutritional therapy practitioner, I would be putting you on an immune supplement. Um, that that contains things like my talking mushrooms and things like that. Okay. So, yeah, there's a company called Pure P U R E. Oh, okay, I've heard um, of them. And they have um, they have a supplement called Pure Response, which Pure is Response. a multivitamin that has um, specific immune boosters in it. You have been a ton of information. Thank you so much. So great. Yes. So great. Yeah. Oh, you're so welcome. I'm so, I was so honored to come and speak to your group. And if there's any time that you want me to come back or have questions, please let me know. Um, I want to be of support to all of you as much as I can. I just want to reiterate to you guys that 
you know, I truly wholeheartedly believe that everything stems from your gut. Like all the stuff that, that we deal with in our bodies starts in the gut. And so we have to nourish that piece before we do anything else, right? And gut, gut health and mental health are all tied together too. So make sure that you're taking care of you. I mean, how many of you have been taking care of everybody else besides yourself? Oftentimes we as women take on so much, right? We just want to be everything to everybody and we end up putting ourselves in last place. And it's time now for you all to put yourselves first because oxygen mass theory, right? If you can't get the breath for yourself, if you can't take care of yourself, you're not going to have anything to give to anyone else. So remember that it's time to take care of you and self-care is absolutely the most important thing you can do right now. And if you look at nutrition and repairing your own inner workings as self-care, it can be life-changing.